greetings, my brother, brothers and sisters, viewing and sisters who are here. <laughs> I greet your name, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who's head of the Christian Church. We thank God for another Wednesday. Uh, thank God for being to come to this house once again. Thank for who he is, what he means to us. He's our everything. He's our all in all. We thank him. Tonight we're going to look at uh, Revelation chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. Revelation chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. Let's pray. Most gracious and all-wise Father, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, and your tender mercy and all of your bountiful and wondrous blessings you have stored us yes. us. And even what you have yet to do, we thank you in advance. God, I pray you've been everything be done and said tonight that will bring you honor and bring you glory. Have your way, God, that we will learn of you, grow in you, and be the people you'll come for these last and evil days, God. Just strengthen us where we weak and build us, build, up, build us up where we turn down. Make us a service to come this end time, God. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name we pray and we do thank you. Amen and amen. Again, Revelation chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. And it reads as follows from the King James Version. And they sang, sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the songs of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thy king of saints. Who shall not, watch this, who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. Let's go and dig it, y'all. There's some good nuggets here. There's some good worship nuggets in here, y'all. Good worship nuggets. In this. Let's start dissecting. There's some nuggets here. It says, And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God. I want to stop right there. I want to go back to verse 2. Uh, the latter part of verse 2, where it talks about uh, that they stand on the sea of glass, having harps of God. These harps are of God. God-given harps. Harps to praise God with. These harps, watch this, were not ordinary harps. Watch this, watch this. I just, I just got a, a revelation. These harps were special. They didn't go to the doo-wop shop and get these harps. They did not go to Carl's, which is no longer listening to this now, think about it, uh, <laughs> music store to get these harps. Uh, they did not go to any music shop at all to get these harps. The Bible says the, that God gave them these harps. Man did not give them these harps, but God gave them these harps. Watch this. These supernatural harps. These music shops don't sell supernatural instruments. They have not the qualifications to give supernatural instruments. But the Bible says God gave these angels, or these, or not angels, these martyrs, hearts. Meaning, can I just show y'all something? This is me. It's not in the Bible. Just me, y'all. Normal instruments that are string, you have, you got to tune them. These God-given supernatural harps are already in tune and don't need to be tuned. Why? Because they're already in tune to worship God. <laughs> Supernaturally tuned up for worshiping a holy God. Tuned 
enough to worship a God who has given them victory. Even though they were martyred, they now have the victory. <laughs> Woo! My mother said, that's shot stuff right there. Watch this text. And listen to what I'm going to tell you. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God. Now catch what the text says. <laughs> catch what the text says. It says, and they, after they receive the harps and they're playing these supernatural instruments, and they sang, sing songs of Moses, the servant of God. Watch this. Moses was the faithful servant of God. Hebrews 3 and 5. He was used by God, watch this, to bring plagues on Egypt. And through him, God accomplished Israel's great deliverance. <laughs> After God brought the Israelites through the Red Sea and destroyed the army that was pursuing them, Moses Listen to this. Moses led them in a great song of praise. Can I just do this? Mo God allowed Moses to write a song. Moses wrote the song of worship and praise for their victory out of Egypt and their victory through the Red Sea. He pens a song. Now watch what I'm going to tell y'all. He pens a song and everybody gravitates to the song that he's pinned. Nobody says, it's none of the, nowhere in the Bible I see it. If y'all did, y'all help me out. But I didn't see nowhere in the Bible where nobody contradicted him when he wrote the song. Nobody, when I say contradicted, nobody said, why do y'all sing that song? Everybody sung the song that Moses wrote through God. Uh -huh. Nobody said, why do y'all sing this song? Nobody was, uh, nobody was, Arguing about the song, everybody watches gravitate to number one, their victory out of Egypt. Number two, their victory over the Red Sea. And everybody gravitate to the orchestration of the writing of Moses of the song. Now, this is this is something for us to gravitate to, y'all. Because when we sing songs, we should not ask why when women. Come on, come on. Thank you, Jesus. When God has orchestrated a song for worship, we should not ask why we gotta sing that song. We should all be in unison of singing a song that the manifestation and the blessings and the anointing and the power of God can come in and bless us in the worship experience. And the reason why we can't get the full worship experience is because somebody is not on the same page. But here right here, they were on the same page. And that's why the the power of God fell on them in the praise and worship. Nobody argued. Watch this. Can I go another way? Nobody had a wrong attitude. Come here, y'all. Oh, God, you pushed me tonight. And everybody had the right mindset for worship because what God had done for us. Not only so much for me individually, but, but for us corporately. And so everybody gravitated to that and started worshiping and praising God for who he is and what he does. Mm -hmm. And they gravitated to the song Moses wrote. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is what Y'all want to stop me? Huh? Right now? Go ahead. I just want to say one thing. <laughs> I want to get to the part of that. I was just going to say too, and the song was about God. Come on here. Yes. It's Margaret. Yes. 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 And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna catch that in a minute. Because you right there. You right there. You're gonna walk me right into it in a minute. You're gonna walk, you're gonna walk me right into it. I'm gonna walk right into it. Okay. Uh, watch this next portion of the text. And then it says, again, and. Meaning there's more to it. And the song of the lamb. They not only sung the song Moses wrote. But now they're also singing, I'm going to show y'all something in a minute. They also sung the song of the Lamb, which means they sung the song of Jesus Christ. Wait a minute. Paul, I 
I mean, John sees all this in the vision. And this is what, wait, can I go this word? This is what the churches should be like because in his vision, that's what's going to happen after tribulation. <laughs> and so what God is saying to us today, y'all might as well get in, 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 in line with what you see in the vision and what's written in the Bible because that's what's going to happen in heaven. Ooh. Now watch this. Because Teresa took me right here and I'm walking in with her, okay? <laughs> See, I can do walk together this day. Okay. Uh, God is rolling tonight. Thank you, Jesus. And now, as she stated, now John quotes what they were saying. The song that Moses wrote and about the Lamb of God. Watch this. Great and marvelous. That word marvelous means wonderful. Great and wonderful and marvelous all thy works, all your works. Oh God almighty. Meaning all powerful. <laughs> he brought through the Red Sea. He brought through the prayers. He brought out of Egypt. The almighty God. Dale, can I just go somewhere? Not only this word means wonderful or all powerful, rather, it also means in the Hebrew, El Shaddai, yes. meaning more than enough. <laughs> and then he goes on to describe in the song, just and true are thy ways. <laughs> thy king, what's it? Thy king of the saints. Catch that, y'all. The king of the saints. <laughs> Can I just do this way? The ruler of the saints. Oh, my goodness. This is good. This is real good. Let me do this. After God brought Israel through the Red Sea, he destroys all of them. And you'll find this in Exodus 15. Verse, hey, read, read, somebody read verse 1. Exodus 15 and 1. 15 and 1. Just one. But it's actually, go home and read the rest of it. It's Exodus 15, 1 through 18. This song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed glorious. The horse and his rider have he thrown into the sea. Watch this. Going back to praise and worship, or worship and praise. They sang to God. Amen. Our song should be to God. Let's go further. Don't get mad at me. We ain't singing to nobody and performing for nobody. Amen. That's what's wrong with the church world right now. We're performing. Amen. We have become professional performers. Yes. We're the same to God in worship. Yes. As plain as what Mr. Freeman read in Exodus 15 and 1, they sang unto God. Amen. And they sung about the Rider on the horse. Once we learn how to gravitate to what God is intended for us to do in worship, we will find the manifestation and the realness of God moving in our midst and healing and deliverance will take place. It is totality. And that's what God intends to happen, but we stifle God's hand. By our attitudes, our mindset in worship. Amen. Prime example, what God intends for us to have and do in worship. Oh my. Watch this. These things you do are powerful. The things you do are powerful. Okay, go ahead. I, I'll say you too. Um, I'm just thinking about in worship and how you got to be focused on God and 
And then the unity of us all in the worship. That when we wound each other, if you're coming to church and your heart's broken because somebody did something, whether it was like on purpose or not, like going and fixing that is so important because you sit there bleeding instead of worshiping. You can't, even, even if you're crying and saying, God, heal me, you're kind of just, that state isn't conducive in the body to, to grow and be healthy anyway, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was just, you know, some people might have a hard neck or have a stiff neck when they won't do what they won't do. Sure. That's, yeah, mm -hmm. some people might be that, but some people are hurt. And they're, they want all the things, but they're sitting there wounded. And I'm not sure anybody thinks of that as being something that's holding you back. But it, I, if I'm like that, I can't. I can't, like, it's like a crack in my vessel or something. Anyway, that's all. Okay. Here's the deal. Lisa, if that does happen, you got to not focus on that. Focus on him. Because when you focus on him, he will deliver you from the hurt. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta to want to be delivered, number one. And number two, you gotta number one, you gotta stay, you gotta be focused. Yeah. Number two, you want to, you gotta to want to be delivered. Yeah. I can say the least, I can say I want and I forgot you. I can say I want to be delivered until Jesus comes. Right. But until I really want to be delivered, I will never be delivered. Uh -huh. yes. All I'm doing is saying words that I really don't mean. Yes. So I'm, all I'm doing, I'm using that word, I'm just going through motions. Right. And not really meaning what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. Until we get to the gravitate to, to focus, I'm not focused on what I'm going through. I'm not focused on this or that. I'm focused on him. I come to worship him. Right. And my mindset is on him. And I, while I'm in worship, I expect him while in worship to deliver me. Yeah. And to heal me. Not, not, not so much physically, but spiritually. Yeah. See, we talk about spirit, physical healing, but we need some physical, spiritual healing. Yeah. Yeah. We need some serious spiritual healing. Yeah. We all, we, 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 even myself, we all talk about physical healing. But we all jacked up spiritually. And we need some spiritual healing. We need some spiritual deliverance. We need to be set free spiritually. Mm -hmm. And we can't until we want to. Yes, ma'am. Oh, you through? I'm done. Okay. I, I think that's okay, the thing I was going to. Tonight is good. I'm going to roll. Good. I was I'm going to roll. roll. And I saw you. I'm going to pray for you. I saw you. But go, go ahead. I was looking at the revelation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Connected to what we've been talking about. Absolutely. Exactly. Once we get that mindset, we will watch God be revealed and manifest in the way he wants to be revealed and manifest in our midst. Mm -hmm. but again, we rather take, we hold his hands rather. We tie his hands up back how we do. How our mindset is in worship. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Today, that just blows my mind. You said, the time I think about it, how he could have died for waters like that, that they go through on dry. Dry land. Wasn't wet, nope. muddy, feet didn't sink down. No. Dry land. Yes. To me, if that was the only thing I had to gravitate to, that's what I would hold on to because to me, that's a miracle. Yes, it is. That lets me know that there's nothing to hurt it can't do. Absolutely. But, like you said, they, to me, they had so much to focus on. Exactly. Absolutely. 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 Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. 
Oh, please do. Whatever you want to do. the song of Moses, the servant of God, is a song given to us in Deuteronomy 32, 1 through 43. It is recorded that Moses wrote this song and taught it to the people. Hold up a minute. I told y'all he wrote it, right? Yes. He taught it to the people. Yes. Now, guess what I just said earlier? They gravitated to what he wrote. Mm -hmm. He wrote it by the Spirit of God. He wrote it by what he experienced. Amen. Go ahead. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 31 and 22. And the song of the Lamb. This is the second song. And begins with the crucifixion, which was absolutely necessary if man was to be redeemed and closes with Jesus Christ as King of Kings. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Saying great and marvelous all your works, Lord God Almighty. The That's first right. Christ, while all his works are great and marvelous. What he did at the cross presents itself as the greatest work of all. That's Just and true are your ways, thou King of saints. Christ is our King by virtue of what he did at the cross and our faith in that finished Work. That's what I'm talking about. Watch this. What well, she just read, out of Deuteronomy, right? Mm -hmm. This that he takes, he takes Moses' song, he takes the crucifixion of Christ, all in one song. <laughs> one song. <laughs> what he done for us through the Red Sea. What he done for us on the cross. <laughs> Oh, this is good. This is good. I like how John connects all this in the vision. All this in one, one vision. He sees the song of Moses and the deliverance through the Red Sea and then the Lamb and what he did for us. He connects all that. And once, yes, what you said, that's Bible, that's scripture. Yes, ma'am. According to Exodus, the 15th chapter, I think the one through the 16th chapter, it says that Moses wrote this song and taught it to the people. Then he said, Great and marvelous are your ways, thou King of Kings. Mm -hmm. Just and true are your ways, thou King of Kings. Mm -hmm. Just and true are your ways, thou King of Kings. Mm -hmm. Just and true are your ways, thou King of Kings. Mm -hmm. Just and true are your ways, was because of what God had brought them through. They yes. were trying to God actually in yes. the midst of it. Yes. And crossing the, the, the sea, the red yes. sea, and all that. They was actually, when you are allowed to go through situations that you know nobody else, even, even them, mm -hmm. were in the midst of each other. Yes. But what did they do? See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What that they could do. So they had to depend upon God. They had to be, right. depend upon the greatest to deliver them from what, you know, whatever they were going through. Mm -hmm. So they could sing this song. Yes. Now it's not that when we come to worship and praise God, we ought to have a song to sing like that too. We got the word he's done for us. Yes. Not the songwriter. We sing it sometimes the songwriter song. But that's how the Yeah. 
There you go. That's the word. I experienced it. Right. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. So David, David told you. Yeah. Said it, they all experience. I, I got you. They all experience the Red Sea. Yes. That's why they got, they got all sing it from the heart. Yes. They all can ex have experienced yes. the Red Sea deliverance. Yes. <laughs> and that's why they can sing it. Yes. Yeah, yes. without any problem. <laughs> First of all, I'll piggyback on you because I'm saying some corporate <laughs> like that. But but if corporately when we come together with that same heart only, the leader has the authority that you're not supposed to be in here all while we're singing that song. They're like, clap your hands. You clap your hands. It's like you, you follow the leader because the anointing's there and looking to go. Like, I, it's a terrible idea to be like, why are you singing this song? That, that's gross. Like, that's, that's a bad idea. That's not the good way. But but then I've also thought one other thing when she was talking, I was thinking about some songs that have been sung in the Holy Ghost sometimes sing to me now in my spirit. I'll be driving along like there was one time years ago when Brenda sang I've Got a Feeling. She was standing right there. That thing will sing to me. Like You'll just be like fresh anointing to send my spirit right now. Live still. It's really beautiful how the Lord does that. Yeah. Well, Catch this, y'all. And all that we have said tonight. Amen. Now we got to do something. Including me. Including me. I'm going to say it for the third time. Including me. Because we see what John saw and see what Moses wrote and why Moses wrote what he wrote and how it even transpired even in Exodus to Revelation before Christ even came on the scene. He, write, he writes, Moses writes a forehand of what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And why we sing it. We're not just to be saying this, we sing it. We sing it with purpose. We sing it with reason. We're singing. Yes. Again, they all gravitated. They all had the same mindset. They all had the same spirit. They had the all same purpose. And when that, I'm going to say it again, when they do you, we do that. God will reveal himself in a mighty and an awesome way. And healing will take place. I'm not only talking about physical healing. I'm talking about spiritual healing will take place. And I'm going to emphasize, we're so stuck on physical healing, but we're just jacked up spiritually. We need spiritual healing as well as physical healing. It makes no sense to come to church and go home the way you can. Come to church mad and go home mad. Now he just sings a song. What's the song say? In Jesus' name. Her wound in the lane. Don't leave here like you can. In Jesus' name. And I want to tell y'all something. God says, I want to heal my people. I want to reveal and manifest myself among my people. But my people, I'm going to say, I said it for probably the fifth time now. My people tie my hands by how they come to my house. And I'm, my, 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 my pastor, you say, I saw your hand. Uh, you look like you've been sucking on sour lemons. And we sing a song, I don't know what you come here to do. But I come to what? Hello, somebody. Oh, about him. And he's singing to him. We, ain't sing, we are not singing to the individual. We're singing to him. Right. We're glorifying him. We are honoring him in worship and praise. It's not a performance. Uh -huh. Church is not Hollywood. Yeah. Church is a place where we reverence God, respect God, and adore him, and exalt him, and glorify him, and he gets all the glory and the honor. Nobody in the house does. I don't care if it's a bishop, apostle, Prophet, prophetess, or whatever, is God that gets the glory. Yes. And Him only. Yes. 
Yes, ma'am. Now, if you're listening to me, who is the one you're doing it for? Is it for man or for God? That's why, and then that way I can answer the question appropriately. Please respond back. And I'll wait for your response, but I'll move on though. <laughs> Please respond back. I urge you to respond back. Whether uh, uh, are we talking about satisfied men or we're talking about satisfying God? Because I got to ask this, depending on how you answer it. Um, wow, this is good, y'all. Wow, anybody else? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Between now and Sunday, what are we going to do? Because now, between now and Sunday, we ought to be worshiping Him and praising Him already. So when Sunday comes, it's automatic. Because I've already been in line with doing that. So I'm ready come Sunday. Can I just use the word, a sports word? I'm hyped come Sunday. Because I've already, I've already done it. I've already done it from the heart. All the way from Wednesday all the way to Sunday. So now I'm hyped from Sunday morning. Now I got to give you a warning. Thank you, Jesus. The devil is no you on me hyped. He gonna kill your hype. He gonna bring a hype killer. He gonna bring a joy stealer. In front of you while you have already been worshiping him up until Sunday. And you hype, but he's going to bring something to kill your hype. Mm -hmm. Now, Jaden, I'm going to ask you like this. What are you going to do when your hype is trying to be killed? <laughs> do you stop or do you maintain your spirit of hypeness yeah. and worship him anyhow? Yeah. Yeah. Now watch this. We sing a song used to Hallelujah. Yeah. Anyhow. Yeah. Watch the song. It says, never let your problems get you down. Yeah. And then he gives, he gives, he, he tells you what to do. 
He says, when your problems come your way, lift your hands up high and say, hallelujah. Yeah. Anyhow. Lead us to understand, I will submit to us that what goes on, I'm not going to allow that to kill my joy and steal my heart in the spirit realm. I'm looking beyond, I saw your head. I'm looking beyond all that and seeing him. Him. And if I got, if I got to close my eyes, hear me, y'all, and I look at distractions. Yeah. And when I close my eyes, and I saw you, and close my eyes, I'm focused on him when my eyes are closed. And my eyes are being closed, I see nobody but him. I don't see nothing else. I don't see nobody else. I see him with my eyes closed. Because there are going to be some distractions. Oh, yeah. Okay, you got one minute. <laughs> Did you? Respond back? Or he? Okay. Please, I'm urging you. Yes, ma'am. I just want to say too that we also have to have the discernment and recognize that the enemy is the enemy. Yes. And that's the key again, that it's always the enemy, it's not the enemy. Yes. Yes. And, well, you do. Okay. And I, I, I saw you, I got you. I got you. Okay. Tell me what you just said. You got to recognize the enemy is not an individual. Is it? It's the enemy. It's not the person. It's the enemy that's trying to distract you from your worship and praise. So that's why you got to focus on him and not on the enemy. So you maintain your worship and receive your blessing. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. And that's why we need to receive what we need to receive from God. That's right. Because our focus is our voice. Yes. We, our focus is somewhere else. Yes. And when we come, we have to become a pirate. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you have to make sure you get in that door while I'm being stabbed to be my fire. You get a part of a fire while you're there. Yes. You get a fire. Yeah. And how in the world are you? Yes. How in the world are you my feet? Yes. Oh, my God. Or begin 
then the worship, because yes. the worship will not. If true worship will take you from carnal to a place that you saw them in your face, yes. then it will really not be taken away. Exactly. We got to press into the worship yes. Yes. because that attacks. It's strong sometimes. Yes. Yes. You have that mind. No, I'm a worship worker. Yes. Yes. When I go ahead, yes. oh, he's going to steal up. Oh, yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And that's the whole, and that's why the enemy doesn't want you because he knows he don't come and see about you. Why you wouldn't worship. And he wants to distract you from that because he knows that he won't come and see you. Wait a minute, you know why he knows that? Because he was the head of worship. Can I just, thank you, Holy Ghost. That's why he want to kill us in our worship. Follow me, Lisa, come back walk. He, that's why he would kill us in our worship because he was the leader of worship. He know what worship is all about. The leader of worship. He knows what it takes for worship. He knows what it takes to move God. He knows what it takes to get God's attention in worship. And he wants to distract that. Because when you get God's attention, the blessings will come. And I want to tell you something. He don't want you to be blessed. Yeah. But you and I got to make up our minds yes. that I come to be blessed. Mm -hmm. And I come to receive something from God. Yeah. And as Mr. Minister Mary was talking about and others were talking about how God done things for him, we should never, we sing this song, but I think we may be lying. I never shall forget what the Lord has done for me. Because yeah. a whole lot of us forgot. Because of distraction. And I'm talking about me too. This, this is good lesson. It's in everybody. Even the one who talked. Yeah. How much do you love me in worship? Because if you really love me in worship, you will worship me and not let stuff distract you. Oh my goodness. I ain't got the four yet. <laughs> we may not get the four. <laughs> Go ahead. I was just thinking about it. I thought Mr. Kirk said that he's going to come and see about me. Yes, he is. And the scripture text in the verse about he inclined his sister. He did it over the people. What did he say? Yes. Yeah. The psalmist says he inclines his ear, means he leans over the balcony of heaven and the. Yes. I got, I got his attention. Yeah. For him to lean over? Yes. Oh, Jesus. Yes. Now, I know we all in worship, but. but you have to look at kind of like individual. Call he, I'm going to worship, but, but you need it all and give attention to me. Everybody in here be worshiping, but he's still giving attention to each one, each one of us and attention to each one of us. Catch that, y'all. Everybody who worship, and at the same time, he's bending over and giving attention to each and every one of us. I don't even know if I'm going to go to four. I'm staying right here at three. I'm staying right here at three. He's a sister right here. Right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. We do four next week, y'all. God is warning us in verse three to learn how to stay focused on him and what God has done for us. For us. Yeah, I'm going to talk about this one. There's something that happened here at the church for weeks. Today, God bless it, get, get done. Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell y'all. Because some of y'all saw it. Mm -hmm. See that stuff down, down the hill? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, there was homeless people. I'm going to give a testimony. Because prayer does work. Yes, yes. A testimony. There was, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you the whole scenario. I'm going to tell you how God works stuff out. Stuff, homeless were camping out back there. And there were, I won't go through the whole detail, there were some substances back down there. 
The church, watch this, the church received a notice from the city because of that. They gave us so many days to take care of that. The church. Now I make a run. Watch this. And if we didn't get it done, this was the fine. The fine was from one hundred dollars to fifteen hundred. It had to be done by Friday. Today is Wednesday. I had to be at church, and a man called the church. I called him back. He told me what to do, how to do, and who to call. Called the man last night. He said, I'll be here tomorrow. That stuff is cleaned up and all of the substance is gone. Yes. Tell me what God won't do. Yes. When you pray yes. and you mean what you pray yes. and you expect God, if you hope for that which you see not, then you would patiently wait for it. All from Friday all the way to today. I waited. Did nobody know the full story? Now y'all know now. The full story, nobody knew but Dana Ross. She did all the stuff to help me out. And God moved by his mighty hand and his mighty power. And I just found out today the person who did the work used to live across you from my mother. <laughs> Remember Whitney? Brenda? Whitney did it. God will drop somebody in your way. God. Yes, he does. It's amazing. That you, you didn't know who it was until the manifestation shows up. And Dina tells me, said, he said he knows you. Really? Then she told me the name today. I said, yeah, I know him. He did it. He did it. And it is macro. What God, it's no secret Amen. what God can do. God will do it. And I thank God for what he did. I praise God for what he did through somebody else. Can I just tell y'all something? God will work, for, work through somebody else to work for you. <laughs> to work on your behalf. But when, can I go back? I'm going, I, I ain't lost a lesson, y'all. But when we start to bless God for what he done, God will bless you even the more. God will open doors. The reason why we can't open do doors are not open like it should be open for us, we're not consistent. We're inconsistent with God. Come on, y'all. All of us, including me, we're inconsistent with God. But God is always consistent with us. He will always bless us. But do, how are we blessing him? Because we are created to worship him. We are created to praise him. We are created to adore him, magnify him, and glorify him. We were made to glorify him. Not no man, no more man. It's to glorify him and him alone. And once we get that in our spirits and in our mindset, we will find ourselves being more blessed than ever before. God is saying, I want to bless you with your time and hands. But stop letting the enemy and even yourself tie your hands. Because mm -hmm. watch this, y'all. The Bible says in Hebrews, talk about give, even when you listen to this, y'all, and I'm going to close. Even when you don't feel like worshiping him, worship him anyway. Because Hebrews said, give us a sacrifice of praise, which means, and I don't even feel like it, I'm going to bless you. And also in Psalms, it says it too. Give us a sacrifice of praise. You deserve it. You deserve my praise. You deserve my worship. You deserve it. You died for me and I was worthless. But you thought I was worth, I, you thought I was worth something? Come here, y'all. 
When I think I'm worthless, but he thinks I'm worth something. And when others think I'm worthless, he thinks I'm worth something. He died for me because I'm worth it. I'm worth it. You worth it. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Anybody want to add? Go ahead. Then I got, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question too. I forgot. Yes, it is. 283. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yes, because I think it's 1 through 12, something like that. It's all of blessings in obedience. In obedience. And blessings, what is it? Blessings will overtake you when we operate in obedience. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Devonda asked me a question last week. Tell me your question again. You forgot? I didn't. Devonda, Sister Devonda asked me a question. Yeah, you did. I'm, I ain't going to answer all of them. Uh, <laughs> she asked me a question, and you correct me if I'm wrong. Where did John die? You right? Uh -huh. Where did John die? She asked me, she said, did he die on, on the Isle of Patmos? Mm -hmm. Or did he die somewhere else? Yeah, he came back to, you know. Yeah, well, I'm going there too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She asked me a question. After Bible study, she asked me a question. She asked me a bunch of questions. I'm going to answer a couple of them. I'll answer them probably with you. Uh, she asked me, where did he die? Did he die in Pat Patmos? Or did he die somewhere else? So the divine. And did she ask me, how, did you ask me how he died? I think you did. I'll okay, answer that too. Uh, John died at Ephesus. He did not die in Pegasus. He died at Ephesus. Now, do you ask me? Did you ask me how he died? Yes, you did. Yes. So how did how did John die? John did not die by way of martyr as the others. Listen to this. They try to kill John though. If you go look at research, they try to boil John in oil. Hot oil. Look at God. Now, I'm going to show y'all something. This is going to help somebody. When you do the will of God, God will protect you. Y'all hear what I said? I'm going to show you how in a minute. When you do the will of God, God will protect you. They try to kill John in boiling hot oil. They put John in oil. Listen to this. And the oil did not hurt John. Hot oil. John did not die. Research and Bible says John did not die and the oil did not harm John. John was the only apostle of Jesus Christ that did not die by way of martyr. John died of natural causes of an old age. Check that out. When I read that, and I'm, I'm glad you, you asked me that question, because I got some stuff out of it personally out of this with John. John lived so close to God that God spared his life from boiling hot oil. Did not hurt him. Did not harm him. Now, hold on, Lisa. I got to roll where I wrote it. The reason why John was on the Isle of Patmos, anybody know? Then we're going out here, y'all. Huh? He 
He, he was exiled, but why was he exiled? There was a reason why he went on our patterns. <laughs> Are you asking me why? <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you. Watch this. Watch, watch, watch what God does in the midst of trouble. Watch what God does, does for you and uses you in the midst of trouble. John was put on the Isle of Patmos, Patmos because he was preaching the word of God. It was his, Isle of Patmos, of Patmos was his sentence for preaching. He couldn't preach about the Isle of Patmos. So what he tried to do was shut John up. And he put John on the Isle of Patmos for preaching the gospel. But I'm going to show you the hand of God. The hand of God. While John was on the path out of Patmos to be sentenced for preaching the gospel, God used him on the Isle of Patmos to bring forth the word for us today. What the devil meant for evil, God meant for good. <laughs> he uses John's sentence for good. He uses it for the good of the saints. Wow. <laughs> I'm done, y'all. This was a great night. Great lesson. Thank you for your inputs. We're looking five and six, four and six next week. <laughs> God bless you. I want to make mention of something going forward. As, as we do prayer requests on uh, Wednesdays, when you come in, sign a name you want prayer for. And we'll pray for that instead of me asking like we do on Sundays. Uh, we, you, there's, a, there's a piece of paper. Then you sign the page person you want uh, prayer for going forward after the night. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, same thing with Sunday. All right? Mm -hmm. All right. Any prayer requests? <laughs> All these hands. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Keith, uh, Bishop Tom Johnson and Freddie lost his brother. He did? He lost the father that turned on lost his brother. Okay. Wow. Wow. He did, did it with his wife, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. One of my nieces, Patrice, um, she's going into a surgery. I don't know if she's living, but it's a Patrice? Okay. Got you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Still there? Okay. Okay. But well, we still, yeah, okay. Still want to go further from there. Yeah, okay. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Let's go and pray. Most gracious and all wise Father. We again thank you for your goodness, your kindness, and your tender mercy, and all of your bountiful and wondrous blessings you have stored upon us. And even what you're yet to do, we thank you. Thank you for what you're doing right now and what you're going to do for we, your people. Thank you, Lord. God, I pray in the mighty and awesome name of Jesus. That God, you'll bless each one that is assembled here in your house this evening. Bless them name by name and one by one in the name of Jesus. Bless them, strengthen them, encourage them, open doors, provide them in Jesus' name. God, I pray you'll bless the names that brought before us. Bless Bishop Tyrone Johnson and family in the loss of his brother. Give comfort, give strength. You reach where no one can reach and you touch where no one can touch. God, you do as only you can do in Jesus' name. God, I pray you bless Dignity Pinkston's uh, niece, Patrice. I pray you bless and touch her with your mighty hand, God. God, bless the doctors, give them the wisdom, the knowledge to know what to do and know how to do in the name of Jesus. 
God, move by your mighty hand and your mighty power for Patrice. And I pray, God, you move awesomely and mighty for her. I pray your hands of blessings be upon her in the name of Jesus. God, I pray you bless the Williams' mother. Touch her by your mighty hand of healing. Move by your mighty hand and your mighty power. Give the doctors the wisdom and the knowledge to know what's going on and to know how to treat her in the name of Jesus. Move by your mighty hand and your mighty power. God, I pray you bless Lady Weather's brother. You touch and move for him. Move by your mighty hand and your mighty power. I pray you move awesomely for him, God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for what you're doing for him and thanking you for what you're going to do for him, God. Bless him in a mighty abundant way, God. Bless all of our sick, name by name and one by one. Meet their needs physically, God, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray, God, you bless upcoming worship, God. You be it everything be done and said that will bring you honor and bring you glory. God have us come to worship you in spirit and in truth. In the name of Jesus. We have the same mind, the same spirit in worship God to come to glorify you and magnify your name and stay focused on you in worship God. Oh God, have tunnel vision and see only you God. In worship, God, and bless us, God, mightily and awesomely in our worship experience in the name of Jesus. And have us, God, be consistent in our worship to you and in our praise to you, God. Be consistent, God, not up and down, but consistent, God, in our worship, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I pray in the name of Jesus as we leave your house and go our various ways, get in every vehicle. Bind every mechanical problem. Dispatch your angels around us in our travel, God. We pray, traveling mercies, these blessings we ask in Jesus' name. For your glory, your son, Jesus, we pray, and we do thank you. Amen and amen. amen. Brother Jalen, did she respond? Okay. All right. God bless you. God keep you. This is our prayer.